Are you still using Bash? Well, stop that. It's time for an upgrade. Why you may ask? Well, let me show you. This is ZSH. It's like Bash, but way better. It includes everything that Bash already has, but it does way more. It's also way more configurable, has a lot of community plugins and themes, and has all those small little features here and there that just makes it that much more better. So this is my own custom ZSH config. I want to show you some of its little quirks and features. So first thing first, you're going to see this doesn't look normal because it has a custom theme. Not only that, it has multiple custom themes and you can switch between them by pressing Ctrl P. For example, now I switch to the minimal mode. The minimal mode does not show you anything but the current working directory. So for example, if I want to go to downloads, it will show me my current working directory and that's it. As opposed to normal mode, the normal mode is going to show you the username, host name, current working directory and the time. So this is one of the nice things about ZSH. You can have multiple themes, you can have multiple configs, and you can switch between them by simple keybind. You don't have to restart ZSH, you don't have to reload your config. It's just one, one key press away from you know switching your themes out. So as you can see down here, there is all the directories in my current working directory. So currently I'm in the home directory, and the directories down below is all the directories I can go to from my home directory. And you don't even have to type them out. All you gotta do is just press the down arrow, and you can scroll through them and choose whatever directory you want to go to you just press enter you're right inside of it and then you can choose the next directory now we are in the cli visualizer directory i can press down arrow again choose any directory in here press enter and now we're inside that it's as simple and as quick as that so this is one of the nice features about all suggestions but not only that we have other more nice features for example if i want to download a package i'm going to use pacman since we are using arch and it will show you all the packages that it, you can download so you can scroll through the packages you don't have to type anything and for example if i type in uh, firefox it will show me all the firefox packages and i can just go through them and select whatever i want for example i didn't know there was a firefox adblock plus package until now and it allows you to search through your distro repo and search through the packages and this is really really useful if you're trying to find one package and you don't know that it's multiple and or sometimes if you don't know the complete name for it one good example of this, if I type an XF86 video, if I'm searching for a video driver and I don't quite remember the name of the video driver, I can just type in part of the package name and then I can scroll through all the available packages. So for example, if I choose a VM1 driver, I just press enter, it will download it for me. It's just nice and quick. And that's not even the best part. If I type in Pac-Man again, it will show you all the arguments down below. Not only that, but also it shows you a description of these arguments and what they do so you no longer have to go to the man page and search pacman and then search through all the arguments so you can find what the argument does all you gotta do is type in your command and it will show you all the arguments and if i put in one argument here for example like i'm gonna put the dash s then it will show you the other arguments that you could mix with the s argument now this is really nice and handy especially if you type in a really long command and you don't want to go back to the man page so you can find the argument it will show you all the arguments right there in front of you and you don't have to search for anything and this works with most of the commands for example if we use the xlander command this command can do a lot of different things but one of the most common uses for this command is to use it to change the screen resolution so it takes a couple of arguments you need to give it the adapter name or display name and then you need to give it the resolution and for this setup it's quite simple all you gotta do is type in output and down below it will show me all my outputs my connected and my disconnected outputs for, and i can go down there and scroll through them i'm going to select the connected output press space and then i can select mode and then it will show me all the modes so you don't have to like tab in the mode manually i can go here and select any resolution um for example i'm going to select 800 by 600 press enter it will change to that nice and quick and i want to change the resolution again i go back in there and then i'm going to select 1920 by 1080 just like that it's a, such a big time saver. It saves you a lot of time every time you try and type something and you forget a, an argument or you don't know what kind of packages or output to expect. You can easily just find it because everything just shows up as you're typing it. So it saves you quite a lot of time. And also, as you might have noticed, we also have syntax highlighting. For example, the command itself is in green because the command is available. But if we type the command wrong or the command does not exist, it will show up as red because that command does not exist and won't be able to execute. And then the arguments are going to be in purple and then other is going to be in white so sometimes this means other arguments or sometimes this could be files or it could be packages and you saw how i deleted this entire thing with one command and that's because zsh has a lot of nice key binds and you can easily configure them so for example in my own zsh rc i have all these key binds right here and then i can show you some of them i can show you what they do if i press delete it will delete the entire line if i press Control up it will undo what i've done if i press Control down it will delete backwards word by word and if i press Control up it will bring these words backward one by one. Also, if I press Control and 
press left, it will go left, word by word, right, it will go back, right, word by word. If I hold Alt and do the same, I can jump all the way to the beginning of the line, or I can jump to the end of the line. And not only that, but if the command is too long and I want to edit something in the command, you can hold Control X, it will jump into Vim mode. And then you can edit the command in Vim. And for example, I don't know, let's say I want to add another command in here. It's going to be echo, test, test, test. And then I can save and exit and it will bring this entire line back to my terminal. This is extremely nice because sometimes you have a really long command or you have a command that has multiple lines. And sometimes it can get quite annoying to edit inside the terminal. All you can do is you press Control X, it will jump to Vim mode. And then you can edit the command and then you can exit it out of it and bring the command back in. Another nice feature of ZSH is the history feature. So for example, if I start typing a command, it will show me the history of this command and what it run with. For example, last time we used sudo, we used pacman. And if I want to reuse this command I used in the history, uh, I hold control and I press the right arrow. And it will really bring commands or arguments I have used previously. And if I don't want to use this argument, but I want to use another argument from even more earlier in history, all I gotta do is just press the up arrow and it will show me every single time I use sudo pacman s and it will show me all the arguments I have used in the past. Go through here and select whichever argument that you want and you can select any of these, press enter, it will bring it in here and then you can try and right away. And this works basically with every command. So for example, if I type in vim, it will show me the file that I most recently edited, which was the zshrc. But if I don't want to edit that, or I want to edit a different file that I edited earlier in the history, all I gotta do is uh, press the up arrow and it will show me all the files I've edited with Vim and I can just select any of these, press enter, it will take me to there I can start editing the file right away Another nifty feature that I have, if you type in history, it will show you all the commands that you run in history and then you can search through them, for example, I'm gonna search Vim and then you can search up and down because this is basically just piping it into less An even faster way to do it, if you type in history you can add an argument and the argument can be anything that you want to search for so for example, if you want to search for Vim it will show you every single time that you use Vim and it will even show you the time where we use the command history to search for Vim. So this is really nice. So there is many multiple different ways that you could use to search for history. And the point of this config is to be as quick and as fast as possible getting from point A to point B. And with the least amount of uh, keybinds and with the least amount of um, commands. Also, we have other ZSH specific features. For example, if I type in, let's say, I don't know pack mam and I mistype it. If I press enter, it will try to guess what's the closest command this could be to. For example, pack mam, the closest thing it could be is pack man. So it will ask you, did you mean that? And if I type y, it will just run the command. Usually with bash, if you type something wrong, it will just tell you the command does not exist. But with zsh, it will try to guess what the command could be. And then it will ask you if this is the command that you meant. So this is very handy, especially if you type in a lot of commands and you're going through, you pass through the terminal and you accidentally mistype something. It will ask you, did you mean this command? And then you can choose whether you meant this command or not. There is other like nifty features, for example, we have auto CD. If you know you can choose any of these directories and jump right into them, but if you don't want to do that, all you gotta do is type in the directory name. You don't have to type in CD and press enter, it will just take you there. All right, so this is some of the highlights of my own config. Now we understand what ZSH is and what it can do. You're probably wondering how to install it. So I did upload my dot files to GitHub. I also made a quick installation script that will let you install this config to most of Linux distros. And I will show you how to install this for yourself. So if you wanna have the same ZSH setup on configs on your own system, you can go to my GitHub page right here, and then you will have everything that you need to recreate my setup. There is quick instructions right here and some pictures. All right, to install this, all you gotta do is now is clone the repo, and then I'm gonna cd into it. And in here, we're gonna have bzsh install.sh. This is gonna be our installation script. I can show you really quick what's inside of it and what it's gonna do. Basically, this is a script. It's very small and quick. All it's gonna do is gonna check for the dependencies, and if you don't have the dependencies, it's gonna install them for you. And then it's gonna pull this zsh plugins and install them. Then it's gonna pull my zshrc and install it in your own home directory. And then it will check if everything is installed correctly. And if it is, it's going to tell you it is installed correctly. If it's not, then it's going to tell you that something went wrong. And for this script, you're going to need to use sudo because if we don't have dependencies, it's going to try to download it for you. And you will need to use sudo for that. So type in sudo bash and then the file name. So this is going to be bzsh install.sh. Press enter. It will give you a small quick message. So this script will install zsh, zsh plugins, and configure a custom zsh rc. And these are the dependencies needed. If you don't have these dependencies, it will auto download them for you. So I'm going to press Y to start the installation. And as you can see here, it did not find ZSH, so it will download and install this for you. So I'm going to give it the Y option, and I'm just going to let it do this thing. All right, now it's done. 
It's saying ZSH, ZSH RC, and plugins are installed and configured correctly. Default share for the user bill, which is my current user, will be changed to ZSH after login. So now what we have to do is log out and log back in into our system. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log back in. Now if I open the terminal, perfect. Now we have the same exact setup and we have syntax highlighting. And even though we are on Ubuntu, if I type in apt install, and type in anything it will show you all the packages so you will still have the same exact functionalities and if i press ctrl x it will take us to vim and we can edit the command inside of here if i exit out of vim it will put the command back into the terminal and then we have all these key bands all these nice features all right so feel free to use my config and i highly recommend going to the zshrc and then play around with it a little bit change some things maybe you want to change the key binds and you know, customize it for what suits you. So that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed watching, then be sure to leave a like. Also, if there is anything that you want to see in the future, then please leave a comment. If it's interesting enough, then I'll try to make that happen. I'm gonna peace out, and I hope to see you in the next video. See ya.